well, of course, Partick Thistle manager. Uh, I mean, it's just an intriguing watch for all of us. It must be an absolute nightmare to be in charge of a team in that battle. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, a stressful, it's stressful for every manager in the battle, but I think it's great for the neutral. I think the, the, the games needed it, the first division needed it at their end, and, and also uh, the Premiership as well. It's, it's been great for us. And we saw that Friday night as well. Your team kicked off the weekend against St Mirren. Great atmosphere at the game. A point apiece. Fair reflection on the game or not for you? Yeah, it probably was a fair result. Um, we scored a wonderful goal. Carl Higginbottom with a great cross. Um, and Chris Doolan with a great finish as well. Um, and an even contest, both teams went at it. Um, it, was, it was a good football on, on show as well. Um, a bit of a soft penalty, as we'll see here, I thought. I thought you might say that. <laughs> yeah, I think Carl's caught the wrong side and to feel the sitting there player does well to win the penalty, but um, we thought it was soft at our end. It is so tight down there. We've already seen that bottom six table. You must be watching every result. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is everybody's capable of beating everybody else, and I think every manager knows that as well, and that's more or less our team talk every week. Look, we can go out and beat whoever we're playing. Um, it's the same today as well. Yeah, it was a big goal, big game as well in Dingwall yesterday when Ross County took on Kilmarnock, and they won that by two goals to one. And my word, they needed this because they were at 11th at the start of this game, Ross County. Derek Adams' side needed a big result. They got a big goal in Philip Keish to start things well, off. Well, they did, because you know, Ross County's been watching everybody else winning games. They've been watching Alan Spark and Thistle winning games. You know, Hibs, unfortunately, haven't won any. Um, but I think it was five defeats and six now for, for Kilmarnock. They're right in the matter. They're down to 11th place. But Ross County have got a lift. You know, teams don't like going up to Dingwall. You know, it's a long way up there. So they have to try and use that to their advantage. They're going two up. Of course, they conceded later on. I think Richie Britton scores this penalty in the end. But it'll be big relief for Derek Adams because he's seen everyone else maybe making a bit of a gap above them. But now the gap's closed now right back in the mix. Chris Boyd eventually got a consolation goal as well. His 20th of the season. I think a lot of people thought his goals would be enough to keep Kelly out of trouble. Do you see it that way, Michael? Well, just think of, think of it. Minus Chris Boyd's goals, what trouble they'd be in. I think there's no doubt about it that he's been a huge influence on the team, not just with his goals, but I think everybody in the game will tell you what an influential figure he's become for them this season. And I think it's a, it's a worrying thought for Kamarik. If they hadn't had Chris Boyd, I think they would have been caught adrift in 11th place already. OK, to the top six and to Pitodre. Aberdeen against St Johnson again. And they must be sick of the sight of Stevie May, who scored again against the Dons. Yeah, he's absolutely incredible. He's goal, I think that's about 27, I think, for the season. Um, he just keeps on scoring. And St Johnson will be hoping they take that into the cup final as well. Poor defending though, isn't it, on that goal and by Chris Miller here, a bad ball back that lets Adam Rooney in. Yeah, it's very unlike. St Johnson team, they're very professional, the way they're set up and you don't see many mistakes from them. Aberdeen, if they'd won that game, they would have qualified for Europe, I should tell you. It was the same scenario for Motherwell as they took on Dundee United at Tannadice. It was Stevie Hamill's 500th appearance. Stephen, for your old team though, it did not go well. Well, I'm sure it's one Stephen would like to forget, but you know, I think Nanny Chief Chi, you know, you can't take anything away from him. Anytime we've seen him live here in BT Sport, he's been terrific. You know, he scores goals, he takes men on, he's creative, he makes things happen. But I think from Stuart McCall's point of view, he'll be looking at it and thinking the ease at which, you know, Dundee United scored some of their goals. You know, the spaces in behind their back four, the gaps between full backs and centre halves, Stuart won't be pleased with. That's 14 goals in four games Dundee United have got against Motherwell. They've obviously got the measure off them, the pace, the sharpness, everything about them has caused them problems. But, you know, for Jackie McNamara, terrific result. Good goal by Stuart Armstrong, who's been great as well this season. But they seem to score excellent goals. And they've done this a lot this season. Well, they're a fantastic team, you know, from, uh, I think, front to uh, sort of middle to front, there's no doubt that they're, they're up there with all the best teams in the, in the league. And they're capable of ripping any team apart. And, you know, to score five against a, a well-organised team like Motherwell is no mean achievement. But, as I said, they're definitely capable of it. Nadia Chief, when you've got somebody like that in your team, who, uh, you know, quite rightly, I think he's, uh, he'll, he'll probably get named in the, the team of the year, I think you've always got an opportunity. I mean, you look at that second goal he scored there when the ball comes into the box. You see Ronaldo during the week in the Champions League. He plays his one over the bar like that. It's not an easy opportunity. But they're a fantastic team, Dundee United. Ainsworth got one back for Motherwell. Didn't really matter, though. This is the table. Dundee United stay in contention for an automatic Europa League qualification place. Just four points behind Motherwell now. The gap between the Dons and Motherwell is also four points. We saw the bottom six earlier on. It is so tight. Coming up, we'll refocus on this derby. The fans are arriving in good numbers. The teams last met a month ago. That was an emotionally charged day. In fact, there have been a few big moments in their last three league meetings so far this season. And it's Callum Patterson! It's Collins. And Collins scribbling. He's beaten McDonald, who oh, has been saved. And it's gone in. Smith. Liam Craig remains icy cool. Oh, and is this going to be an early goal for the Jumpers? It is! Billy King, 2-0 to Hearts! Lots of...
lots of European football to come on BT Sport 1 tonight and tomorrow. Tonight at 6.30, the European Football Show features Lille against Bordeaux. Lille looking to secure Champions League qualification. And tomorrow at 7.45, same channel, the Serie A clash between Sassuolo and Juventus. Juve closing in on the Scudetto. Team news headlines here at Easter Road. Scott Robertson is back in, having missed 12 matches with a knee injury for Hibs, who make four changes in all. Liam Craig, the Hibs captain, returns to midfield. He has been out of favour at times. Two changes for Hearts as well. Their captain, Danny Wilson, returns from suspension. And with Jamie Hamill banned, Scott Robinson is in. It is his 11th Edinburgh derby already. Much better news for Hearts on the takeover front in recent weeks. In fact, all ties with Lithuania could finally be cut tomorrow. And that means two women in waiting and budge would take control of the club. This is the lowdown on the future queen of Hearts. She's a fan like everyone else, and I think that means that the supporters have that connection with her, first and foremost. But that's not to say that her heart will... She will be the executive chairperson of the club, so she'll be running the club on a day-to-day -day basis. She wants to get the financial stability right in the club. That's why the foundation requires the working capital to go in to stabilise the finances. She needs to grow the club. It's been hollowed out. And at the head of the company, trying to make us in the best possible shape to get us back into membership is our primary goal. But lots and lots of work to be done. The getting hearts out of administration is not the end of the process. It's merely the beginning. But there's a bright future, and I'm sure everyone's looking forward to it. Ian Murray, MP, speaking very highly there of Anne Budge. I wanted to ask you, going ahead, it seems whatever form Hearts are in next season, they're going to be run in a much more prudent manner. Well, that's a good thing. I think that, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the episode, the, the period of time that's uh, you know, uh, been encompassed by Romanov's charges is shown to be not the right way to do things. I think that um, moving forward, you know, Anne Budge will be in charge for you know the next uh, sort of four to five years until the fans take over. It will be more prudent. But, you know, Hearts is a club... It's the fans that have kept them alive. They've got a huge support. Even being run prudently, they're still going to be able to, you know, potentially when they come back to the top flight, be able to pay better wages than the vast majority of the, the other teams. And it's an attractive club to play for as well. And Anne Budge will have some big decisions to make. There was talk that maybe Craig Levine would be installed as manager. Gary Locke has been working away this season. The last time we spoke, you were quite critical of Gary Locke. Since then, results have turned around. Do you stand by what you said? Oh, well, yeah, I do. I mean, I think there's no doubt about it that, you know, the results have... There have been an upturn in the results. Um, and that's, you know, the, the management team, the players have all got to take credit for that. But, you know, I look over the, the whole course of the season and I think that things could have been done differently. I think that, uh, you know, if, had, if things been done, you know, properly, I think that uh, there could have been a chance that Hearts could have avoided relegation, which is a huge, huge thing. Uh, moving forward, obviously, it's Hans Bud's decision to make uh, whether she'll change the manager or not. But he has to take credit for the way things have upturned in the last month or so. Alan, in that last month or so, you saw Hearts firsthand when they went to Four Hill. They won by four goals to two. Sorry to remind you of that, but you must have seen the development of some of those youngsters firsthand as well. Yeah, there's been a real development, a real change in them as well over the season. Uh, and Gary maybe has to take credit for that as well, keeping them going. So there's a lot of hard times for them. Um, but I think you've seen a difference when we played at Four Hill. They're playing with right freedom now, a rela relaxation in a, a kind of weird way. Possibly relegations, maybe let them relax and go and play football. And now you're seeing a wee bit of quality with them. And we saw that day, Billy King, Dale Carrick, absolutely outstanding. Who's caught your eye? Well, I think it's Dale Carrick. You know, I think you look at Hibs who are struggling to score goals, and Hearts seem to find a little bit of a gem. You know, he's only 19 years of age. Again, this is a game of Fur Hill, but you know, when you're a young centre forward, you have to get yourself into good areas. You see the two centre halves are square on, they're watching the ball. Young strikers have to learn to get into those kind of areas. Take 
advantage of centre half's ball watch, and he does that. He gets himself around the box. He's got that ability of finding space. You can see here his movement. He's anticipating where the ball's coming from in the big derby. He anticipates that Rand Stevens is going to win the first header. Still a lot of work to do. His first touch has to be good. But as a young striker, if he can score goals, he can get into good habits at a young age, he's certainly going to make your way to the top. He had a really good derby a month ago, that's for sure. Right, let's hear from both of the managers ahead of the game. Gary Locke and Terry Butcher have been speaking to Emma Dodds. Terry, is this the, the perfect match to turn your fortunes around? Does this occasion lift the players in itself? Yeah, it does. And it's been the perfect week in many aspects because we've had a good build-up. Um, we had some good talking to do after the game against uh, St Mirren, especially the start. And uh, the boys have been, uh, you know, got a lot of things off their chest, same as us. Um, so we've, we've come together very well this week. And I think when you've got a derby match, you, the build-up is you know, really one that has, has to focus your mind and does do. You know, all the talk with, between the fans and the families and everything else like that and friends, you know, it's all leading towards... Uh, 12 45 on, on Sunday afternoon so yeah we've um, we've had a good week but we have to take that on the pitch now and that's what that's what really matters and really counts and we're hurting after we're you know, still hurting after the, the, the last derby defeat but you know there's reasons why we lost that game but you know we want to put that right today you've made four changes it's important all your players turn up today but is it especially important your experienced ones lead by example yeah we've got I said to the players we've got six good experienced players on the on the pitch some some youngsters Jason Cummings up front is only 18 mm -hmm. But he scored against Hart, same as Sam has, uh, Sam Stanton, um, in the age groups below um, the first team level. So um, yeah, you know, they've, they've, they've got a good friendship as well. So yeah, difficult decisions to make, but I've gone with a team with, with good experience, but players that you know, can bring these young players along well. Gary, two changes for you today. How much are your players looking forward to this uh, derby match? Yeah, I think it's a game all the players should look forward to. You know, they're a great occasion. Uh, we just played Hibs a couple of weeks ago, so... They're very familiar to us, but uh, you know, the players are looking forward to the game and uh, you know, hopefully we can get three points. Yeah, you did play them not so long ago. You got a great result that day. What will you need to do here if you're to get another three points? Yeah, something similar. You know, the derbies, you've always got to win your individual battles and uh, when we do get the ball, we've got to use it you know, wisely and move the ball quickly. And hopefully if we can do that, you know, we've got players that can cause Hibs one or two problems. Well, the last time you played, Hibs could have officially relegated you. Today, a victory for Hearts could really put Hibs in the mire. Do you want Hibs to, to go down into the Championship? No, I'm, to be honest with you, you know, I said it during the week, I'm not, I'm not interested in you know, what happens to Hibs. I can only concentrate on Hart and Midlothian. You know, and, you know, it's an Edinburgh derby. We want to win the game for ourselves and for our supporters after everything that we've been through this season. Mm -hmm. So you know, whatever happens after that will happen. Uh, but all we can influence is what happens at Hearts. And you know, certainly today we're looking to try and get three points. Well, thanks for your time, Gary. Enjoy the game. Thanks very much. Cheers. Everybody. And that's his Terry Butcher right now, prowling in the home dressing room, just contemplating what is a massive day for him and for his club. Let's discuss Hibs then, because they are in a real state right now. One win in 15, one goal in the last six games. Not a great set of stats, especially when you come to the business end of the season. I think the first goal today is going to be huge. If Hibs can actually manage to score, they might be in a good position. But on the other side, if Hearts score, I think Hibs will be in real trouble. They've only scored the first goal once in their last nine games. And there's been a lot of tough talking done in the press this week. From the goalkeeper, Ben Williams, said some of the players were spoilt. Michael Nelson's responded as well. They seem to be doing their talking through the media. Well, it doesn't look good if you're a Hibs fan or, you know, probably Terry Butcher as well. Players are speaking out. It's not the way I would have done it. But sometimes it takes that down. You know, if it galvanises the players today, if it puts people in a foul, mood if it kind of you know G's them up for the game then it's going to work you know I think that um, Ben Williams has said they're a little bit soft I think Michael Nelson took it personally I think as a team hits are a little bit soft I think the goals they can see you know, the back four get dragged all over the place I think they're easy to score against I think that's what he's meaning that has to change today Alan you also saw them recently you defeated them by three goals to one did you see confidence issues in the Hibs team that day? Uh, not early on because they started the game really well uh, and I think that's vital today they've got to try and use their support today to, to help them uh, rather than be on their backs and they've got a massive support today as well so They've got to start the game really well, which they did do against us, but they've got to keep it up. OK, gents, thank you very much for now. Not far away from kick-off now. The last Edinburgh derby of the season, perhaps the last in a while. Even more reason to secure victory, to take the bragging rights away for the foreseeable. And then there's also that relegation factor for Hibs to their fight. The stakes are sky high. We'll be back in a few minutes, ready to go for a big 90 minutes. Scottish Football and BT Sport, sponsored by William Hill.
smooth and refreshing. McEwen's Red, now rolling out across the country. Make love, not war, with new Lynx Peace. Searching for a car can be such a car fuffle. Do the words headless and chicken spring to mind? Mark! Motors.co.uk have introduced a completely new way to search, letting you find cars by what matters to you, like budget, running costs, or any extras you want. And they're history checked for your peace of mind. There you go. The twins will love it. Find cars without the carfuffle at motors.co.uk. How do you find a good tradesman? How do you find a good painter? How do you find a good builder? How do you find a good carpenter? Ratedpeople.com can help. With a network of more than 25,000 tradesmen across the UK, Rated People helps you take care of your most important asset, your home. So the next time you're looking for a tradesman, Make sure they're rated. Ratedpeople.com for quality local tradesmen. Sometimes you need to dig deep. Come on, every During hard exercise, breakdown happens deep inside your muscle fibers. Maxi Nutrition helps provide your muscles with the proteins they need to recover. Helping make you stronger and perform better. Maxi Nutrition, you stronger. Welcome to a new era for MotoGP on BT Sport. Right before the lights turn green, it's just business as normal. And now your viewing experience has an extra dimension. Oh, not even out <laughs> No longer do you just have to settle for TV. Tablet and your phone are going to be a central part of your viewing experience. In Qatar. Follow the MotoGP on, uh, on BT. Grand Prix of Argentina, live only on BT Sport 2. Scottish Football and BT Sport, sponsored by William Hill. Almost set to go Easter Road. Hibs against Hearts, a massive Edinburgh derby. And with Michael Stewart, Alan Archibald and Stephen Cragen. Michael, Hibs have rung the changes again. Terry Butcher still looking for that right answer, the, the solution that he's not found recently. Well, you've hit the nail on the head. He's not found it. You know, every week there's changes uh, in the team. And yet again, there is uh, more today. And it's a real worry for the Hibs support at this time of the, the, the season. You would think that you would have a settled team. But unfortunately for them, they don't. And, you know, you continue to look for that right blind and hopefully he'll be hoping like mad that uh, he found it today. The last derby was quite an amazing game. Hearts won that, of course, and avoided being relegated by their greatest rivals. There'll be a, a carry-on effect. As the Partick Thistle manager in the bottom six, I guess you're looking for a Hearts victory, Alan. I think any team in the, the bottom half of the league, they will not do any harm, but I think Hearts will have a massive say in how the league finishes at the end of the, end of the season. Um, and the way they're playing as well will also affect it. Yeah, they've got some key games to come in the next few weeks for everyone involved in that fight down the bottom. Stephen, you were with me in the last derby as well. Do you think there'll be any carry-on lingering effects? No, well, I think Gary Locke will just say that his players start to gain the way he started the last one. Kerry Butcher will be looking back to the game round about the new year time and he'll be trying to think what he said to his players that night to motivate them to get them up for the game. This is huge for Hibs. If they win today, it suddenly relieves a little bit of pressure. All the negative stuff, all the negative press and negative stats, they have to try and put that to one side, focus on the game. But for Gary Locke's side, see the game. Boys, go out, enjoy the occasion and go and thrive. OK, there's Danny Wilson, Hart's captain emerging. We're just waiting for Hibs. So let's hand over to our match commentators, Gary McAllister and Derek. Thank you very much, Daryl. Good afternoon, everyone. Four weeks on from the last time, Hibernian and Hart of Midlothian are on a collision course in the capital again. It is the final derby of the season. It's a fixture we might not witness for a while, although given the malaise enveloping Hibernian, there are no guarantees on that score. Hardeman Lothian made a bold Tynecastle stand at the most recent Edinburgh skirmish. 
Now can Hibbs grab the stage in this, their hour of need? Easter Road alive with atmosphere. So to the team news, Hibernian have gone with the side that did the rounds on social media yesterday. Whoever leaked that had it right. Four changes from the 2-0 reverse in Paisley. In have come Ryan McGibbon back from suspension. Liam Craig, a fit against Scott Robertson for his first appearance since January. And 18-year-old Jason Cummings. James Collins, Lewis Stevenson and Owine Tudor Jones are on the bench. Danny Haynes misses out completely. Hearts make a couple of changes from the side that beat Ross County. Captain Danny Wilson returns from suspension and starts. There's a place too for local boy Scott Robinson. He makes his 11th Edinburgh Derby appearance. Jamie Hamill is banned following his rush of blood against the Staggies. Brad Mackay drops to the bench. Gary, the tactics. Well, again, Terry Butcher shuffling the pack. This time we feel they'll go 4 2 3 1. The experience of Craig and Thompson just patrolling in front of that back four, allowing the youngsters Stanton and Harris to go to support. Another youngster Cummings up front, and fit again Robertson coming in off the left. Hearts similar, 4-2-3-1 four, four, again. Again with two holding midfielders and that attacking trio in the midfield of King Stevenson to support Carrick. Well, we are going to observe a minute's applause in memory of Margot MacDonald, independent MSP for Lothian Region and a fervent Hibernian fan, plus Sandy Jardin, one of Edinburgh's great football men, the former Scotland Rangers and heart of Midlothian defender, and of course was assistant manager and co-manager of Hearts in the 1980s as well. Let us here at Easter Road now pause for reflection. Morgan McDonald and Sandy Jordan, two greatly respected figures here in Edinburgh. Just about ready for the off. And we've been here before, haven't we? And recently, it's a massive game for Hibernian. No two ways about that. And it will be Hibbs to kick off. Going towards the Dunbar end of the ground, as it used to be known. Bobby Madden. Is the man in the middle. Every Edinburgh derby has its own dynamic. Today the pressure is on Hibbs to stop the rot. Five successive defeats, nine games without a win. Hearts relegated arithmetically. But the Jambos have the capacity to deepen the gloom here in Leaf. Gary, what will be important for you today? Well, it's who can keep calm. I agree with you. The pressure is most certainly on the team at Green and White. They need to show character, they need to show belief. But they're playing against the informed side in the entire Premier League, not the bottom six. They're in good form, Hearts playing with less pressure now that they know their destiny. Kevin McCarthy, uh, left back for Hearts. Chase on for Dale Carrick, who scored that early goal in the last meeting of the two. And Gary Lott, the embodiment of Jambo Joy a month ago. Hearts have really pushed on since. A win for Hearts today, incidentally, and they would be level with the capital rivals in terms of points gathered on the pitch. That's if you ignore the 
15 point deduction. Terry Butcher has never been afraid of a battle. Well, he's got one in this his first season as Hibbs manager. Right towards Jason Cummings leading the line. He's been banging in the goals for the under 20s league leaders. Michael Nelson. The play continuing. Kevin Thompson beside Liam Craig. And Scott Robinson was eager. Craig was a bit slow in reacting. It's McGibbon with the challenge on Billy King. Well, we're less than two minutes in, and that's twice McGivern's went through the back of King. He can have no complaints, doesn't get any of the ball at all. And it's that trailing leg is the dangerous one. The left foot of McCatty has gone over there. And by Kevin McCatty, looking for Dale Carrick to flick it on. And Dylan McGowan taking a swing at it, the Aussie. It's a fixture to be cherished, the Edinburgh derby. Anyone's guess whether or not it will be around next season. Yes, that would be in the championship. Hearts well represented today, that's a full stand. 3,600. No, they're jumping, the Hearts fans really impressed by the numbers here. But no surprises, they're playing well. Robinson. Filling the Jamie Hamill role in midfield. In his debut for Hearts six years ago yesterday. Robinson. One nil win against Inverness Cali Vissel. Jamie McDonald, arguably Hearts' best player this season. Started every game. Michael Nelson. Charged with the task of keeping Dale Carrick in check. Kevin Thompson. His experience will be very significant if Hibs are to have success today. Yeah, and even in this opening three, three and a half minutes, very apparent. Hibs are hunting the ball together. There's an intensity about them. He's sent a look up for it in this early stage. Ryan McGibbon, it's the one that got away. Back from suspension, the Northern Ireland international. Search for the ball in front of the East Stand. Callum Patterson to take this. It's his sixth successive start at right back. He sees his future there. Patterson, the 19 year old. It's been a story of youth having its say for the Jambos this season. Michael Nelson had to get rid of it. Yeah, I think Malcolm, Michael Nelson is looking for his keeper to come and take command here. Just a little ball over the top. I think he's looking for the keeper to come and help, but then taking no chances. Robinson. There's King. Tom Castle was his courtyard. The end of the last derby. That spectacular goal. Not the death to put the seal on victory. Just weren't going to let relegation happen that day. Well, that's what you expect in a derby. Kevin McCatty together with Alan Maybury. And this is something we didn't see at Tyne Castle in the last derby. You know, challenges like that. There's Maybury. And Craig was up there now. Kevin Thompson. Not hit with the accuracy he was looking for. Yeah, it's a diagonal ball to the back post. Patterson gets up and clears. But Thompson, it falls nicely for him on the half volley and just sits back on it. He knows he can do better. 15th Edinburgh Derby for Kevin Thompson. He's a player who's very interested in coaching and management down the line. You've worked with him, Gary. Yeah, good footballer, good professional. Just interesting to see him linked with with Hearts this morning. Well, it's almost that time of year, isn't it? <laughs> the linking time of year. No, he'll be in there today for his calm and influence, his ability to go on the ball, not to shy away from responsibility. McCarty with the throw for Hart of Midlothian. Space here for Liam Craig, in and out of the Hibernian side. 
into reverse when the Hibs fans wanted the forward ball. And it's Michael Nelson and it's Ben Williams. He didn't mess around with his comments the other day. About the Hibs players, their apparent softness. No, and that's why I'm not a big fan of, of players tweeting amongst each other. I don't think it's a good thing. There when it's said face to face. Well, he's been an excellent goalkeeper for Hibs. Something you've got to say. Ben Williams, the big man Kirian. Brisk pace here, Stanton. Well, they're good pals, they two young players. Stanton and Cummings know each other well, of course. Yeah, it's a good positive darting run, breaking from the middle of the park by Stanton. That's what Terry Butcher will be looking for. And then he's got to look to combine with Cummings. A lot of training together at East Mains. And for the under-20s, as well as the first team. Seven minutes on the stopwatch. Hibs nil, Hearts nil in the final Edinburgh derby of the season. Maybury, former Hearts player, was sent off for Hibs at Tyne Castle last month. Was right before Billy King scored for the Jambos. Yeah, I thought Maybury's red card was just frustration. They were outplayed, outgunned the whole day at Tyne Castle. McGowan has got in there as McCarthy takes it for Hearts. King. Can they get the shot in? It was Patterson. King. McGowan going over there to meet him. Thompson plugging the gap. McGowan. It's worked its way to Cummings. And Danny Wilson was calm. Just a little... Scrappy phase of play, the burning just unable to clear. And then McGivern just gets it to safety, just to relieve the pressure. Joseph Cummings, by the way, did have a spell at the Hearts Academy. It's not uncommon for that to happen in Edinburgh football circles. There's his youngsters will bounce around. Made his way to Hibbs last summer from Hutchison Vale. How many? Edinburgh players have come through the ranks at Hutchison Vale over the years. Oh, it's, yeah, there's, there's been loads and loads, all generations as well. Great work done by coaches at the clubs like Hutchison Vale, Salverson Boys Club. Don't forget that Edinburgh is a huge part of the Scottish football story. And the free kick here is going to Hearts. It's gone McCatty's way. Scott Robinson standing over it. The Hibs are going down as the cry from the Hearts supporters. Not quite yet. Alex Harris. Well, he has pace. He couldn't reach that ball. Some of the Jambos have come here for a party. It's a role reversal, isn't it? Oh, 100%. The last time it was the Hibbies, 